All right, folks, I've got one for you today. Pastor Kevin here bringing you today's daily devotion. Um, we've been talking about this series that I've called Control, and it's just kind of trying to question how we deal with control. Either it's when we were being controlling or being controlled. Um, how do we let the gospel influence how we actually deal in those situations? Um, today's one that it, it's hitting close to home. Uh, we are just celebrated uh, my son's uh, graduation from high school, and we're very proud of him. And he's going to be going to University of Irv or University of California, Irvine. We're again very proud of him. He's going to want to be. He wants to be a civil engineer, um, and it's super exciting. And um, and it made me think like my daughter, and when we were so proud of her, she graduated, and you know she had she was actually you know I remember Harvard or Yale. I can't remember. Maybe it was Yale. Someone asked to interview her. She didn't make it in. But it was like, you know, it's those moments you're proud as a parent. But I started thinking about this in control. And it's like, how is it that our society somehow has got us, um, we, we want to control our kids' education a ton, right? If it's not like the best schools, maybe it's the most Christian-y ones or whatever, right? So I have a story from you. This is from Daniel. We're going to be in chapter one. And it goes like this. This is chapter one, starting in verse three. By the way, you know, okay, so Daniel and his buddies get taken off into exile into Babylon. And this is what the story is telling us. And it says this. Then the king commanded Ashpenaz, his chief eunuch, to bring some of the people of Israel, both of the royal family and of the nobility, youths without blemish, of good appearance and skillful in all wisdom, endowed with knowledge, understanding, learning, and competent to stand in the king's palace, and to teach them the literature and language of the Chaldeans. The king assigned them a daily portion of the food that the king ate and of the wine that he drank. They were to be educated for three years, and at the end of that time, they were to stand before the king. Among these were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah of the tribe of Judah. Okay. Uh, I'm using this as, uh, I'm using it just to bounce off the idea of, in this case, these guys are being taught in the ways of the foreigner. They are kind of the elite from Israel, the elite youngsters. I mean, they're quite young at this point, likely. And they're being taught in the ways of Babylon. Uh, they want to basically, this is kind of one of the ways that you would get people to, um, to, to just assimilate Right. If, if you bring the smartest and the brightest from a particular culture that you have actually just fought and won against, you've taken them over, then you bring in their, their elite and you teach them the ways of Babylon and you treat them well, you feed them well, then who's going to be a really good evangelist for the country of Babylon or for the nation of Babylon? Well, those people, right? That's kind of the strategy, so to speak. That's the way that, that Babylon would try to control and other, other nations as well, right? You assimilate them in and then make them those that would go out and tell their own people how good this nation is. Okay. Think about this in the way we deal with school. My son just graduated, very proud of him. And, but I, I think about how, have we somehow made the education of our kids too high a priority as if it's the thing that's going to save them, <laughs> right? Is it possible that we're putting a lot of eggs in the basket of education? Because I tell, I'm going to tell you right now, in our culture, in our Western culture, in the Western world, in, in the U.S., um, intellect is like really important to us. We feed our brains all the time. Smart people are, are the, you know, I, I think smart people get looked up to, right? It's, it's not a bad thing to be smart. But I'm going to ask you just over the centuries, I, I would argue there are more and more people that are actually um, university educated than there were ever, and that continues to grow. Are we better? Because Are we less violent? Are we more unified? Are we more Jesus-y because of it? And I'm going to argue, no, that's not the case. And in fact, I would argue, and I'm going to tell you that I took this, this approach a little bit with our kids. I, I never wanted them, if they told me that they didn't want to go to college, I was going to have a conversation with them and, and talk to them about their gifts and so forth and see, well, does this make sense? And I think maybe we should be doing that more in the sense of the, God has granted us capabilities. And, and let's be really honest. I know we don't like to hear this, but some of us are straight up smarter than others. <laughs> I, I know a bunch of people that are far smarter than me, right? And it's just like, and I'm okay with that. It's like, I have particular gifts. They have particular gifts, right? And that is something to, to enjoy and, and, and be okay with. 
Because when you find the gifts that you're good at, and you find joy and find out ways of glorifying God with them, isn't, that's letting God have control, right? But yet sometimes, I think we press our kids into little cubbies and spaces that maybe, maybe we're trying something that we shouldn't. Maybe we're pushing something that we shouldn't. I, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm super excited that my kids chose to get further educated because I think, I think they're talented, they're smart, they can do it. They have the capability of doing it. But I also am fearful because I know what the university system is going to teach. I know that they are going to be the proverbial frogs in the water that's coming to a boil with the cultural motifs and ideas that they're going to learn. But let's just say for a second, let's just hypothetically, let's just say, well, we want our kids to go to Christian schools, so we're going to put them in Christian schools so that they're going to learn Christian-y things, right? Well, isn't that us just um, farming out the job that we're supposed to do? Man, it's, it's just funny. I think there is this... We often take the approach of trying to control things in this way, but I think oftentimes our control is meeting what the culture is telling us, not what God is. Man, if you have a child who's a really good servant, just loves helping people, like when grandma and grandpa come over, that person is the one who, who gets the pillows for them and slides chairs up and gets them all the things they want, that is blessed. Maybe they're not good at math, but they're good at that. That's super good. I should argue, can we just let God control some of this? I mean, because, yeah, I'm in this mode right now. I'm like, I'm, my daughter's in college. I'm about to send my son off. We're about to be empty nesters. And I'm nervous. And I'm thinking, well, did I take too much control or not take enough control when they were getting a Christian education and thinking that they were being farmed out and being taught the right things? That's my job. As their parent, that's my job. That's my wife's job. We're to teach them in the ways of our Lord. We're to teach them that they are pursued and loved so that when they get to the right time, they will make the decision on their own. That they would know how loved they are and that this world will tell them a bunch of things that's actually false, not true. But they can still love and honor and cherish not just their God, but the people around them who may see them as an enemy. Man, I pray that I did some sort of a job at that. I, I don't, I'm not sure. I'm not confident. I'm going to tell you guys. But I love them. They will always come back. And I just want to make sure that you recognize, maybe I exerted a certain amount of control or pushed them to do something that maybe they shouldn't. Are you doing the same? So, I ask you, is this one of those situations where we're being like the nation of Babylon, trying to get our kids, you know, control them in such a way when maybe we should just teach teach them. You should learn to be controlled by God, to leave the ultimate control to the king, the sovereign one, the one who loves you, the one who is good, the one who has your back in the ultimate things. Maybe that's the better message so that they don't become like us, maybe trying to over control or too, too easily controlled ourselves, Right? So we look to a king and we teach about that king. We say, no, he did this wonderful thing for me. He saved me. He reconciled me to God when I could not on my own. He paid my debt because I, I was penniless when it really comes to spiritual matters. And he saved me. That's the message, the gospel message we want to seep into our kids regardless of how much we want to control their schooling, and get them into good schools so they're going to get a good job and get a lot of money. Well, I'll tell you what, maybe in some ways that is a bad thing. Maybe for some that's bad. Do you recognize that? So are we listening to God as we even talk about what we're doing with our kids? So we love them, we teach them the gospel, and we look at how God has gifted them and let him be the ultimate control. And we, we try to build them up in the ways that, that we can and, and remind them of the things that they should do and shouldn't do. That's all good, but I'm just saying, I think we should be careful how we try to control them and make sure that, does the control I'm trying to place over my kids look more like our nation or like our king, right? All right, let's pray. Father God, I thank you so much. I thank you for my kids. I love them. They are a grace, a gift to me and my wife. I thank you so much. Help me to continue to raise them even as they are leave, they've left the house, that I can teach them to love you, 
Teach them to honor you, to, to, to be obedient to you out of goodness and love and, and the stuff that your spirit puts in us to, to want to do these things. I pray that you would help them do that. Help me do that more each and every day. Help those that are listening right now to actually inculcate and teach their kids this type of stuff, that the gospel is the primary thing, that you are the primary thing, and that you have our lives ultimately taken care of, and we should be relying on you to give us direction, even in small things. And when you don't, we go to your scripture and we say, okay, this seems like the right thing to do. Father, we submit it before you. Let's go. Help us do that, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we'll see you next time.